guys so today i'm going to be setting up my new hamster in this critter trail cage i'm sure most of you saw the last video i did with this cage this is the brand new cage critter trail is just releasing it's going to be in stores in the u.s in may while this cage isn't huge by any means it's around 500 square inches of floor space which is over the minimum of 450 like I said in that video, the box does say 540 square inches of floor space, but after I measured it, I think it's a little bit under 500 because of the rounded corners and everything. Also, sorry for the weird angle. I was trying to be able to get the cage and everything in the shot, and this is the only way I could get it to work. But today we are going to be setting up my new hamster in this cage. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be using this cage permanently for my new hamster. Right now he's in a bin cage, which is perfectly fine. His bin is actually right around the same size. So I don't know if he'll stay in here permanently or not. I just wanted to put one of my hamsters in here so I can personally see how I like it after trying it out a little bit. And so I can give you guys a full review because you can look at a cage all you want, but until you try it, you'll find some good things, you'll find some bad things. And I really wanna be able to share that with you guys. So I'm gonna be testing it out, even if it's not permanently. I know in the first video, a lot of people were saying that this cage is too small. I do just wanna reiterate, it is about 500 square inches of floor space. So in the US, I know other countries do have a lot bigger minimums, but in the US, this is a suitable cage on our minimums. A lot of people in the hamster community you see will have cages that are 1,000 square inches, 1,500 square inches, and while that is amazing that some people can do that, I'm fully aware not everyone has the space to do that. So I want to be able to show you guys some different options. I also know that aquariums and bins are way cheaper, and personally my favorite are aquariums, but some people just really want a store-bought cage, so I want to be able to give you guys a full review of a store-bought cage now that we finally have one available that is the minimum. So on the table I have a variety of things we're going to try to put in there today. Before I set it up, I do want to announce the name of my new hamster. So many of you in the comments of my first video gave me the name suggestion of Badger because he does kind of look like a little badger. Well, I think that's really cute. I didn't think it quite fit him, but I did go with that theme. So one of my favorite movies of all time is actually the 1970 something version of Robin Hood by Disney. I don't know if a lot of you have seen it. It's a very underrated Disney movie. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But in that movie, there is a badger and his name is Friar Tuck. So you guys know I like my really weird names with Mr. Fluffy Butt, of course. So my new hamster's name is Friar Tuck. It's not specifically Badger, but it is a Badger character, so that is his new name. I'm sure most of you will have some strong opinions about it, so let me know those down in the comments. But for now, let's go ahead and get this cage set up, and then we will go grab him and put him in. Right now, I did go ahead and put the bedding in, just because a lot of this is bedding that he had in his previous cage. So I wanted to go ahead and get that transferred over. So he does have some green care fresh in there right now. So I'm gonna zoom in the camera a little bit so you guys can take a closer look. And we're gonna go ahead and get this set up. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to set this up without getting in the way of the camera too much. Not sure how well that's gonna go. Um, so first I'm just going to open up the top and I'm gonna put the wheel in very first. So I'm gonna be using the wheel they sent, which is the brand new 10 inch silent spinner. It does fit in here, but I did test it out before and I noticed you can't put very much bedding below it. So I only have about an inch of bedding over there and I have around four inches on the other side. Um, so the cage isn't really, really tall. So you definitely won't be able to put like a 12 inch wheel in here. I would say 10 is gonna be the max. So that is in there and it looks like it is spinning pretty well. It's not hitting anything, so that should work good. If I do end up using this cage permanently, I don't know if I'll end up leaving this level in or not, but since I want to give you guys a full review, I'm going to keep it in for now and test it out so I can tell you guys how exactly I like it afterwards. So for now, it is going to stay in. I'm going to go ahead and take his food dish. I don't have anything in there yet, and we will sit that right back there in the corner. I also want to test out to see kind of how tall this level is to see if you can really fit Syrian sized toys in here. You guys might remember this mushroom hide from his first cage. This is one I actually sell in my pet shop, which is linked in the description like always. This is the medium one, so it is a Syrian size. So I'm going to see if it will fit, and it does. Um, so you can fit a Syrian sized toy on here. There's about an inch or so up above. So I'm gonna put that back in the corner. And then I have a, another little hide. This is the pear hide that I also sell in my shop. These aren't in stock yet, but I do have to say, make sure you follow Pickles Pet Shop on Twitter because they are finally on their way. And I know as soon as they come in, they will sell out very, very quick. They usually sell out about within the same day. So I always announce it on Twitter first. So if you're interested, make sure you follow me on there. I think I'm gonna put this kind of under the little bridge right here. 
just kind of sneak it back there. I'm actually not going to put anything under this level. I know you could and you could hide some tubes and stuff back there, but I'm guessing he'll just kind of make that into his own den. So I'm gonna leave that part empty and let him have that free space to make his own burrow. So I'll just put that hide right there. Another thing I'm gonna be putting in is another thing from my pet shop. This is just his little seesaw. He's actually been loving this so far. I'm just gonna put it right in the front since he does seem to use that quite a bit. Next, I got quite a few things to hang on the bar since it's been a really long time since I've had a barred cage. I wanted to try it out. This is a bird perch that you saw in one of my recent hauls. I actually think I'm gonna go put it back over there in that back corner. So I'm just going to stick this back here. I do have to say this really big door on the top is very, very nice um, because it's really easy. Let me see where I wanna put this. Maybe I wanna put it, maybe I don't wanna put it back in the corner. Um, I might put it right here so we can kind of get on it from the ramp. Um, we'll try this and then if I don't like it, I can always change it. Um, but this big door does make it really easy to get stuff in and out of this cage. I didn't have to open the top for the wheel or anything or to put the bedding in. I can just put it in right through the big opening. So that is definitely one plus of this cage. So there is his new little perch. And then I do have a few other bird items to choose from. Um, I have this wooden ladder. I have this rope ladder. And then I actually got this rope perch. Like I said in the haul, he's not a big chewer and I'm gonna keep a super close eye on this because if he chews it even a slightest, slightest bit, I'll be taking it out right away. Um, but I think I'm gonna put it in here for now just so we can have some more stuff to explore since he does have a barred cage. That is one of the good things about having a barred cage is you can attach a lot more items more easily than like a bin cage or an aquarium. So this is actually long enough to go across the whole cage. So I think I'm gonna hook it Let's do it under the ramp. I might end up changing this around a lot. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna hook it under the ramp for now and screw it on the bar and make sure it's tight. And then we will kind of wrap it around and we will bring it up here so it's up on top of the level and then we'll screw it on up here. So there is his little rope. I think I'll put this one over here in this back corner kind of behind the wheel. Um, there's not much back here yet, so maybe he will wanna check that out. So I'm gonna hook it to the bar back here. I'm gonna put it pretty low just in case if he does fall, I don't want him falling um, from very high. So I am gonna keep it halfway low. I'm gonna loop it right under this perch and then we can hook it to this bar over here. I'm hooking it to the up and down bars, that way it can't slide back and forth and it always stays in the same position. So there is that. It's nice and low, so it, it's only like an inch off the ground. It doesn't hit the wheel. The wheel still has plenty of space. And the only other thing I have right now as far as ladders and stuff, I have this wood ladder. Um, I'm not sure if I wanna put it anywhere or not. I actually think I'm gonna keep it out because I wanna make sure he still has plenty of floor space to run around. So I'm going to leave this wood ladder out for now. And last, I just have a few toys to put in. Um, there's a couple that were in his cage before. I'm just gonna put one up here on the level for him. There's the wicker ball that you saw in my hole. We'll put that right up here at the front. There is this bird toy that hangs on the bars. I'm gonna hang this in the back corner because the back corner is still a little bit bare. So we will hang this back here on the bar. So that will give him something in the back to play with. And then the last thing is this knot nibbler. He's actually been chewing on this, which is the first thing he's chewed on We'll also put that up here on the level. So now all we have to do is I'm gonna go get the water bottle, get that filled up, fill up the food dish. I will give you guys a little closer look and then we'll go grab Friar Tuck and put him in his new cage. So I just filled up the food and the water and before I get Friar Tuck, I wanted to give you guys a little overview and mention a couple of the downsides that I've noticed just setting up the cage so far. The first big downside I've noticed is the water bottle. You'll notice I don't have the normal water bottle I use, um, which is this bigger one by KT. So the cage itself actually isn't tall enough to put the water bottle inside. Um, so if you notice, if the top of the water bottle is up here, it goes way too far down in the bedding. So unless you don't have like any bedding in there, you're not gonna be able to fit a full-size water bottle inside the cage. And then if you try to put it on the outside and stick it through the bar, the angle of this really didn't work very well. As you can see, it does go through, but it does stick out a little ways. And while it's not a huge deal, um, it is something to think about. So your water bottle placement is a little harder with this than it is somewhere else. So to get over that right now, I'm just using this smaller water bottle. It's actually from the UK. I couldn't find the spring, so I just used a zip tie, um, but it is a good level and everything. And a small water bottle is fine because you should be freshening their water before they drink it all anyway. 
So it's not a big deal that I had to use a smaller one. It's just definitely something to think about if you're thinking about getting this cage. Another thing real quick is you notice with all of this Syrian size stuff in here, there isn't that much floor space for him just to run around in. I don't personally think this is a huge deal because most of my hamsters tend to spend most of their time playing on toys and stuff and not just running around. There are still plenty of little tracks where they can run around, but there's not just a bunch of big open space. Like if you have a 40 gallon, you might have a lot of more open space than this because a 40 gallon is around 100 or 150 square inches bigger. So it is gonna have a little bit more space than this cage. But even though there's not a ton ton of just open space. There was a plenty of space to put everything in that he needs, including the 10 inch wheel. Um, it just looks nice and full. Also like this third of the cage is completely empty floor space since I didn't put anything under the shelf. So there is still plenty of space back there for him to burrow and run around and do whatever he wants. And like I said before, this shelf is nice and high. So you can fit Syrian sized toys on that also. Um, so that's just a little quick overview of the cage along with a couple things I've noticed so far. So let's go take this into the pet room and we will put Friar Tuck in his new cage. So I got the new cage, moved into the pet room. He is on the shelf now right under Mr. Fluffy Butt. This is where his bin cage was before and it actually takes up about the same amount of space that his bin did. His bin looked a little bit bigger but the bottom dimensions were actually about the same. So it does look busier in there than it did with his bin which kind of makes it look smaller but that's just because I did add a few extra toys along with this level. So it's really about the same amount of space. It just looks a little bit different because of the setup of the cage. Um, so this is what it looks like all set up. Now I'm going to grab Friar Tuck and we'll see what he thinks. Okay, so Friar Tuck is actually in this little cup right now. I'm gonna go ahead and put him in. We are still working on taming, so I don't want to freak him out too much. So I'm gonna let him go in there. He's doing really well with taming so far, um, but it hasn't been that long yet, so I don't wanna really show him on camera because he's not comfortable with being held yet. But Friar Tuck is now in his new cage. I don't know if he's going to stay out. It is only around seven o'clock, so he wouldn't normally be awake quite yet. He does wake up pretty early, um, but he probably wants to take a little nap. So let me see if I can get you some shots of him in his new cage. So as you can see how tiny he looks in that 10 inch wheel, he is a baby Syrian hamster right now. So definitely don't expect that out of a full size Syrian hamster, but he definitely had tons of space to grow up in that wheel. Now I think he's going to go back in the corner and go to sleep, of course. So that is going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing this new cage set up. I will have an updated video letting you guys know how much I like this cage or how much I don't like it after he uses it for a month or two. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time.